How's the royal family? I pray that everyone is doing well. Well, my royal family, I have a journey to take the royal family on. Something that I personally just discovered and really astound me. And I'm going to be earnest with the royal family and tell y'all core truth. So after um, I did my first premiere this morning, um, there was someone, it was a brother, um, who was very upset with me um, and saying basically that um, there's nowhere, no, nothing in the Bible talking about we um, will receive, you know, reparations or ADOS somewhere along that line. And then also he was saying that we are not royal and he is real sick of it. And when you have these channels, a lot of negative energy comes at you. Well, that particular comment pissed me off. And I normally don't banter back and forth, which I did not, but I was on the quest to do that. So the first thing that I did was I went to the internet and unks be known to me, because I didn't put it in there like that. Um, I wanted to show this brother that in the word, it clearly tells us that we are a part of a royal priesthood. And it turned out, because I didn't, I, I'll be honest with you, I forgot how I put that combination in like that, because I never used the number 17 when I did that. I, I, the number 17 wasn't even on my psyche, even though I mention it damn near every day to y'all when I do a video. And so, as I'm searching around, I literally don't know how I got here and I was like okay I did not I was not aware that um about these stones but was what was getting to me was that I often refer to our royal babies as precious stones that our father um give to us as a gift and we are supposed to sculpt it and take very special care in these special stones and I did I was not aware that um, and I'll show this one right here this breastplate that it has all the 12 tribes and I said okay there's something else I don't know because I'm gonna keep it earnest with the royal family um, a lot of y'all know I wasn't raised in the church and it's a lot of different things that I know, don't know. That's why I said I'm going to always remain humble and a master student. And that's why I welcome y'all to teach, to, to minister to me and send me scriptures because I'm on my spiritual journey like many. And I'm very open. And I have been told repeatedly that I quote scriptures. And when I hear somebody tell me that, Big Mike behind the scenes tell me a lot, I get real quiet. It, there's not an inkling of proud in me, nowhere. Nowhere. I'm most humble. And I have even came to y'all and said, I'm nothing more, especially after my spiritual experience, nothing more than a mere infant, you know, on this, this quest. So, me being a bit angry led me into something even more precious and beautiful, and I ain't on that. So, as I'm, you know, doing my journey, and I have two videos that I'm going to show, um, when I went back over to the page I'm on now, I look up and it says, you yourself as living stones are being built into a spiritual house for a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices accepted 
acceptable, uh, accepted, acceptable to Yahweh and through Yahweh Shai. And that would be First Peter 2, let me make sure, I don't want to mess it up, 5. And I'm like, well, damn, how did I get there? I'm like, okay, because I was going to, you know, point this out, literally send this brother this link that we do come from royal stock. And I will leave the link here if anybody like to um, to um, look up the scriptures their self and I am um, how can I put it I'm glad that um, he did what he did because it led me to something even more beautiful and divine and so I see here as I'm reading because I just caught one oh here it is um, Isaiah um, 62 3 you will always be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of Yahweh. So a few of these scriptures speaks of us um, as these beautiful, precious stones. So as I'm going on my journey and reading various things, um, I stumbled upon Lisa Cabrera had um, done this series and I knew it took her a lot of work to do this um, when she was doing quite a bit of her um, biblical videos and so I happened to look into it and I got a bit aggravated because I was like our queen worked so hard on this and not many people really took the time some people were even aggravated that she took the time to even do this stuff and so this is where I'm going to start. I know Lisa won't mind that I show this. I personally, Lisa Cabrera, because I know you will listen to this la later. I don't recall um, this particular video that you did. So we're going to start here. And then I have a much longer video where one of our Hebrew brothers break it all down. So let's start here with Lisa, and it's a little over four minutes.
All right. That was very powerful. And I thank you, Lisa Cabrera, for working so hard on that. And I felt like that was fitting to um, get deeper into this next video that I'm going to get into um, about um, the 12 tribes breastplate or he's talking about the 12 tribes precious stones and I did not know that each tribe um, we are designated a stone and these stones are not just something pretty to look at that these stones have special powers and we are attractive to basically the bling i have said this many times i have heard people in my family and friends they'll say damn why every time i go to the store i always go to the most expensive stuff or you know it, you know it's like we'll beat ourselves up on that and it's like i keep saying we come from royal stock so you are supposed to have the best of everything the finest linen the finest jewels quality food quality water all of that we are truly royal so i do admit the brother that came at me so foul and he claims, based on what I've seen, how he put his name, and I'm not going to put him out there like that, that he's a, he, he identifies himself as a Hebrew Israelite. But what I am learning, my royal family, in my journey, because I'm going to stay authentic, that we got folks out here hell-bent to prove whatever they're trying, trying to prove. And it's really about your own personal ego um for the most part i don't come here with my ego i come here earnest but i am human too and i caved into those emotions i felt some kind of way because this is real with me i ain't just made this stuff up talking about we are the true royal family and i'm saying to myself this brother it clearly says in the word, we come from a royal priesthood. We have a royalty. What is he talking about? But you know what? Thank you for leading me. With you coming at me and me caving in almost, led me here. Because I've been talking about our royals. And, and, and we are royals because we are children. And we know who our father is, Yahweh. And we are precious. So these stones were personally selected by our father and possess many powers. And I'm going to, this is pretty much an introduction. I'm going to have to study more um, to um, understand what each stone means and what it represents and what type of powers that it have. Now, as I was going on my journey, I ran into a couple of videos where Esau was quite upset that they were not a part of this, but they found a way to fit they sit self into it. And I don't know how these people get into the word and manipulate it, but they do what they do. And then I heard the stuff about Satan had a, a breastplate and all these different things, too. And I was like, OK, I'll put that to the side and leave that alone because this is all new to me. So we have one of our kings here that really broke it down. Oops. Shalom. I just want to give all praises and glory and honor to unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, 
Bahashem Rakah Kadash and double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that I rule well and that I learn the truth from. And may Yahweh Bahashem Yahushai bestow more blessings upon the elect and to the apostles and elders on down. Yeah, so uh, basically the title of this video is going to be called Yahweh Shai's Infinity Stones. And um, yeah, so I'm just I'm just gonna you know you know I was just I was just inspired to really do this video um, by uh, the different uh, brothers in the different GMS camps on how they did the breakdown of uh, the Avengers movie, the new one that came out by Marvel, uh, that uh, Infinity War, all right, with Thanos, and uh, the brothers were. Certain brothers were breaking down, uh, you know, who Thanos was in the scriptures. And then they showed how Marvel twisted the scriptures to their liking. But um, at the end of the day, Thanos was um, inspired by Yahweh Shai, the high priest, which is Yahweh Shai, okay? Uh, I'm going to get into that a little bit more, but I'm going to go and talk about the stones okay because um the stones that the stones that Yahweh Shai use or that's on his breastplate really represents the 12 tribes of Israel okay and um the infinity stones that you see in the movie that's where they get the idea from okay those stones that you see they really represent it really represents a tribe and the power that each tribe has or that each tribe has to offer okay and um, that's who Yahweh Shai is coming back to get he's coming back to get the elect stones all right his jewels back and he's gonna use those jewels to crush his enemies man through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai so uh, let's get some scriptures here to show who Yahweh Shai is coming back for and that he's really searching for those stones, man. Okay, so this is uh Matthew. This is Matthew chapter I'm gonna start at Matthew chapter ten and I'm gonna start at verse six. And it says, But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As ye go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right? And, uh, but the main point is, But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So, the elect of our nation, or the lost, which are the lost sheep, they are they're lost. Okay? And the Lord is telling the disciples to go look for the elect, to call them out with this word. So, what does that mean? Really, the stones of the nation of Israel, they're lost, okay, and they need to be found. And that's the quest that, that's, that's the quest that Yahweh Shai was on, to find those stones. And that's what we're still doing to this very day, because the elect still has to be sealed. All right, that's why this word is being pushed out on the highways and byways. That's why brothers are doing more videos, more lessons, to find the chosen elect, to find Yahweh Shai's stones. So they can be used to its full potential in the kingdom. Man. All right. Now, when you see the movie, that's exactly what Thanos was trying to do. He was trying to, well, that's what he was doing. He was finding all the stones. He got them. And now he can use them. Okay. And he took them out of the hands of the people who weren't using the stones the right way. Okay. And that, that represents these other nations, man. These other nations, they don't know how to use the stones. And the stones, a.k.a. means you tribes. Because they, they're they the ones who have us in subjection right now. But they don't understand our spirituality the way Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai does. And how we're supposed to be utilized as tools in the spirit. You know, they use us to, to, to build them up in wickedness in this in this kingdom. That's why they keep us as, the, they keep us as their employees. They don't tell us who, they, who we really are in the spirit because you know um, they don't want us to become that great nation man they don't want us to be uh, to be used 
to our full potential by Yahweh Shai, man. That's why they put all these things in our way, in our path, to, to, to not make us know who we are as a people, to not know who our, who our power, power is, to not know that we're great and we're made to be kings and priests and mighty men. And really to rule over them okay all right and it's pretty evident look look at look at all the event look at all the inventions that Jake has created but the so-called white man how does he use those inventions he uses those inventions to destroy the earth okay from the automobile on down everything okay from GMO foods from everything man everything that we take that we use and create he, he takes it and then he uses it to kill man all right. So, so let anyway. Let me continue. Let me go to uh, Matthew chapter fifteen, and I'm going to go to verse twenty-four, and it says, "But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, the lost sheep of the house of Yasha Allah, and that's who Yahweh sent. He sent Yahweh Shai to gather those stones, man. Okay." That's, that represents the lost sheep. And what it, what it, and you know, something about sheep. Sheep are very precious and docile. You know, they can be used the wrong way. They can be abused the wrong way. And they won't even know it because they're so damn docile. And that's how precious stones are used. If you really watch the movie. Alright, but I'm not saying Thanos is Yahweh Shai. I'm just using that using that as a way to, to describe how Yahweh Shai is through the scriptures okay and I'm cutting how Thanos is really supposed to be because if you look at Thanos in the movie on on how he's set up and how he ha how he's using the stones even how he's using the stones in his left hand all of that is on the left hand side okay because he's using the left hand stones in his left hand to utilize that power and really, he wants to destroy the universe, okay? But we know Yahweh Shai, he's a high priest. And we know how the aura of how a priest and how his attire and how he's supposed to look, right? When you go to uh, Hebrews, the fifth chapter, Hebrews, the seventh chapter, and how it, how it explains how Yahweh Shai is the high priest, and he, and he is um, of the order of Melchizedek, right but let me get into exodus chapter 28 because it talks about the apparel of a high priest right after the priesthood of aaron so this is uh exodus chapter 28 i'm going to start at verse 2 and then i'm going to jump around in the chapter and it says and thou shalt make holy garments for aaron thy brother for glory and for beauty and thou shalt speak unto all that are wise-hearted, whom I have filled with the spirit of wisdom, okay, that they may make Aaron's garment to consecrate him, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. And these are the garments which they shall make a breastplate, and an ephod, and a robe, and a broidered coat, a mitre, and a girdle. And they shall make holy garments for Aaron thy brother and his sons, that they, Shalakia, that he may minister unto me in the priest's office. Okay, so he's supposed to have that breastplate and that other, you know, that other apparel that the Lord wants him to wear. Okay, and um, when you look at um, Yahweh Shai, you know, those depiction or the icons that. Uh, the different brothers have made of Yahweh Shai, he's wearing that same apparel, that priestly garment. Okay, and I'm going to put the apparel of the high priest in the post production. I'm going to show you what Yahweh Shai looks like, and I'm going to show you what Exodus chapter 28 is referring to. Alright, so now I'm going to jump down to the 15th verse. It says, And thou shalt make the breastplate of judgment. With cunning work after the work of the ephod, thou shalt make it of gold, of blue, and of purple, and of scarlet, and of fine twine linen. Shall thou make it four square? It shall be being doubled. A span shall be the length thereof. A span shall be the breadth thereof. And thou shalt set it 
in uh, Salakia, and thou shalt set in it settings of stones, even four rows of stones. The first row shall be of sardius, a topaz, and a carbuncle. This shall be the first row, and the second row shall be an emerald, a sapphire, and a diamond. And the third row, a linger, an agate, Salakia, an agate, an amethyst. And the fourth row, a beryl, and an onyx, and a jasper. They shall be set in gold in their enclosings. And the stones shall be with the names of the children of Israel, twelve according to their names, like the engraving of a signet. Every one with his name shall they be according to the twelve tribes. Okay, and that's exactly what Yahweh Shai wears on his breastplate. Okay, and uh, or what the what the priest is supposed to wear, but really that's who he's coming back to gather, the elect, the, the stones. Okay, when you when you look at it, that's why it says go seek the lost sheep of the house of, of Israel, and that's why he's going to get the chosen elect. Now, when you look in the movie, Thanos has six stones. All right, and then he has the six stones in his left hand. So what does that tell you? That's a counterfeit version of what the truth is supposed to be, okay? And that Thanos is really, really a false depiction of, of really of what Yahweh Shai is supposed to be, all right? Anyway, I think that's self-explanatory, or I explained it enough. Uh, let me get into some other scriptures that prove that we're stones, man, and that we're royal stones, or, or crown jewels. Salakia. So let me get um, First Peter. Get uh, First Peter, chapter two, and I'm going to start at the fifth verse. And it says, "Ye also, as lively stones, are built up, up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable." To, to the Most High by Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Okay, and that, that spiritual house of stones is is uh, built off of the elect. Okay, and the 144,000 on down. Okay, and um, that's who Yahweh Shai is dealing with because we are those stones that have been risen up. And um, another thing that came to mind is the, the statement that um, Elder Apostle Gabar said on the highways. Um, he made a statement which which he got from Scripture. Um, he said that Yahweh the, the Father can raise up stones from the ground to serve Him. Right? And then he went on, then Apostle Elder Gabar went on to say that we are those stones that Yahweh Shai rose up. And then he went on to bring out this Scripture to prove it. You know, so symbolically, symbolically, we are the stones of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai that he's in search of to redeem and to get out of this hellhole. All right, and he's going to use us as those tools of righteousness to destroy his enemies. Okay. All right. So uh, let me continue. It says, verse six. Wherefore also it is contained in Scripture: Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone. Elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. And that chief stone is the one that's wielding the twelve stones. Okay? That's where the twelve stones come out of. Yahawashai. Okay? Or which these uh, characters and or which these people in Marvel, um, they twist and they say it's Thanos. Okay? The one wielding the six stones. But really this is referring to Yahawashai wielding the twelve stones. All right, and he's the chief one that's gonna uh, deliver us, man, and use us to our full potential. All right, he's the commander in chief of the stones. All right, so that's all I want from there. Now I'm gonna jump into Zechariah because we're royal stones here, and we're supposed to be used the correct way for royalty. We're not supposed to be used by these heathens, man, because these heathens, they ain't royalty to fucking begin with, all right? They're beneath our feet, 
They're beneath Yahweh Yahweh Shai's feet. All right, and they're meant to be servants. All right, and real soon they're gonna know that they're just they're, that they're just servants. All right, because right now the Lord has has them on high because of our wickedness. But real soon our captivity is going to be is going to come to an end. All right, so uh, let me get uh, let me get the scripture here. This is uh, Zechariah chapter 9, verse 15. All right, and it says, Yahweh of armies shall defend them, and they shall devour and subdue with sling stones, and they shall drink and make a noise as through wine, and they shall be filled like bowels, like bowls, and as the corners of the altar and Yahweh their power shall save them in that day as the flock of his people for they shall be as the stones of a crown lifted up as an ensign upon the land for how great is his goodness and how great is his beauty corn shall make the young men cheerful and new wine the maids okay so you know we're like the crown jewels that is going to be set up and uh, when you read I think it's um let me see if I can find it here. When you read uh, I think it's Sirach. Alright. No, no, Salaki, it's Wisdom of Solomon chapter five. When you read that chapter, it goes into the strangeness of our deliverance and how we're going to be set up on high and how these other nations are gonna be in disbelief. In that day because right now our people we're looked upon as scum of the earth man we're the shit that everybody abstains from 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 uh, you know that abstains from you know or doesn't want to be around or associate themselves with because we're that low right now spiritually right but let me get the scripture it says um, um, wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 Chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him and made no account of his labors. Okay, and you know, those labors is really going into the energy that you bring to the planet Earth, man. Really, our people, we bring more positive energy. Okay, we're, well, that's what we're designed to do. And that's what we try to do when, 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 when we're in captivity. You know, we try to we try to achieve uh, um, positivity, but then these nations they come along and they steal our ideas, and, and and then just torture us, man, and afflict us. All right, going into our inventions and etc. Verse two: When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear, and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation, so far beyond all that they look for. And that strangeness of our salvation is really Yahweh Shai coming back with those ships and delivering us, man, and beaming us up. Okay, that's going to be a strange thing in the sight of these nations. All right? Um, and that's all I want from there, right? You know, we're the Lord's jewels. We're his stones, man, his precious stones. And it's about to be manifested real soon. So let me go... Uh, to Malachi chapter 3 uh, get, to, let's get to the 16th start at the 16th verse and it says then they that feared Yahweh spake often one to another and Yahweh hearkened and heard it and a book of remembrance was written before him for them that feared Yahweh and that thought upon his name and that represents the elect the elect is the only one right now fearing Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and believing in the name of Yahweh Shai. Okay? And they're worried about their salvation. They're worried about their situation right now. Okay? Verse 17 And they shall be mine, saith Yahweh of armies. And that day when I make up my jewels, and I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. All right, 
Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and wicked, between him that serveth the Most High and him that serveth him not. So the elect in that day are going to be the Yahweh Hashem Yahushai's crown jewels. And we're going to be used for righteousness. All right. So let me get, um, let me get, uh, Let me get Daniel chapter seven. You know, because through those, through through Yahweh Shai using his elect, we're gonna take the kingdom, man. All right, with spiritual powers, man. And not some fucking Marvel comic, you know. All right, because Marvel comics is gonna come to life in righteousness, man. All right, so this is Daniel chapter seven, verse eighteen. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Okay? So we're going to take the kingdom with violence, pursuing to Jeremiah chapter 15, uh, verse 19 to 21. Okay? We're going to be the Lord's battle axe and we're going to take the kingdom. We're going to destroy you kings. We're going to destroy you heathen nations. We're going to turn your nations into rubble. And then you're going to have to pay tribute on to us, man. So get ready. It's coming, man. You can feel it. All right? But what does this scripture also entail, man? That we're going to be doing things forever. We're going to be doing great things in the kingdom. All right? We're going to possess. We're going to have an everlasting kingdom. We're going to be creating new things, doing things, you know? And we're going to be worshipped, all right, as powers on the earth, man. All right, so that proves that we're gonna be the Lord's infinity stones, man. We're gonna be infinity, everlasting to everlasting. All right. Let me get uh, let me get uh, Revelation chapter twenty-one, and I'm gonna start at the nineteenth verse, because each stone, when you really look at it, it has a vibration, and we know that the stones being the people, which is the nation of Israel, if we come together in synergy. Through Yahweh Hashem Yoshai, it's going to be limitless, all right. And that's how the kingdom is going to look in that day. And that's why people are going to marvel at it when the Yahweh Hashem Yoshai comes to set it up. So this is um, Revelation chapter twenty-one, verse nineteen. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper. The second sapphire. The third Chalcedony, the fourth in emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth a chrysoprasus, the eleventh adjacent, the twelfth an amphilist. All right, and the twelve gates were twelve twelve pearls. Every several gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it was, as it were transparent glass. And this is going into the beauty and glory of the kingdom of heaven, man. The kingdom that's going to come down on this earth, man. All right, the Lord is going to bring a new, a new world order in His image, and the whole planet Earth is going to be changed into His image. It's going to be changed into glory. Now, when you have a city, you're going to have citizens. And those citizens is gonna what make is gonna really is gonna really what make is really is really gonna make the beauty of the actual kingdom itself. All right, not only it's gonna be beautiful, but it's gonna be beautiful by the people that's gonna be living in it, and that's gonna be our people in order, not breaking the law, statutes, and commandments, being perfect. All right. All right. So let me let me uh, let me continue. It says. Uh, and I saw no temple therein, verse 22, And I saw no temple therein, for Yahweh thy power almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of the Most High did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. That's right. So Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, they're the light. All right? And they're going to make things shine in that day. All right, 
That's why, and you know, that's another thing. That's why a lot of a lot of you dark souls, you can't handle this truth. That's why you run away like a goddamn roach in the nighttime, man. Because you can't handle the light. Because you're just of darkness, man. That's why you can't you can't fathom that Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, their melanated powers. That's why you can't fathom that the chosen people are the Israelites, the ones that you look down upon in this society, man. All right? That's why you can't fathom it. That's why you want to continue to be partakers in this so-called white man's world, being a damn heathen, man. Because you're darkness. All right? All right? And I hope Yahweh Bashem Yahushai comes back and obliterates you people real soon, man. Right around the corner, man. I hope he comes back right now to destroy you like a damn cockroach, man. All right? Let me continue. Verse 24. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it, and the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. And they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. So that's right, you're going to pay tribute, all your kings of the earth, you heathens, you're going to be slaves. You're going to bring your riches and you're going to serve us, man. And you're going to enjoy doing it. You know, it's not going to be like now where you don't enjoy serving us. Right now we're serving you. But in that day, you're going to serve us in righteousness. And you're going to know what it's... You're going to know... You're going to see the real image or the personification of what it means to be a damn king. All right? Or a priest. Because you other nations, you really aren't kings. You're not priests, man. You're priests in wickedness, but you're not priests in righteousness. All right? Verse 27, And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. All right? So that kingdom is going to be perfect, everlasting. Nothing could defile it because we're going to be perfect in that day, man. All right, and with that, I just want to give all praises and glory and honor due unto Yahweh Bashem Yahushai Bahashem Rakakadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone that rule well, and uh, peace and salutations unto the elect. And with that, Shalom. That was very, very powerful. Very powerful. And it was one more thing that I wanted to bring up that I bring up often. Um, and I always do this, my royal family, because we have to remember that there are new people coming to the channel. Um, okay, let me put here. There it is. So, what 12 means in the Bible? And let me get right to it. The meaning of 12, which is considered a perfect number, is that it symbolizes Yah's, or say, Yahweh, power and authority, as well as serving as a perfect governmental foundation. It can also symbolize completeness of the nation of Israel as a whole amazing truly amazing and i am most humble and also astounded going on this spiritual walk and also um being guided in many forms and fashions and linking up with the royal family because this is the last frontier. So that's the thing that makes me feel most, most humble that there is so much that I individually, um, where's that other one, must learn. And, um, what also that I gathered from it, and I, like I said, I know I have to study what each stone represent 
and what type of powers that it have that when we all come together we are a unstoppable force because that power is too great for the enemy and also for the enemy's supporters to penetrate and um and again I'm most humble that I was led this way because I felt a challenge and I felt some kind of way when the brother came at me and said that we are not royal. And you know, the thing that's frustrating to a lot of us to do these videos, we know that some people don't really listen. Because I said in the last part of that video, when I'm speaking of ADOS, I'm really speaking of ADOS spiritually. Esau cannot make us whole. I said in the last part of that video that our father said, we will be richer than nations. Only our father, Yahweh and Yahweh alone can make us whole. Some people really need to take the time and stop being hell bent because you you it's like some people are just waiting for you to go wrong and they want to shove it in your face so it's all about you when i first came here i said i know that i am saying some things wrong and there is a way that we can correct each other but if it's all about that you didn't prove something okay you prove something then what? We need to be very careful in that because our duty and responsibility is for the royal family to gather those precious stones and polish them up and enlighten them. And in return, they can enlighten us. So no one is greater here in the royal family the people that do the videos and the people that just render their voice that I often say. So, but this is also a part of the curses that were put on us where we disrespect each other and despise each other and want to be in competition with each other and all those things that Esau has benefited from us being um, separated. See, when we did not be obedient and he said, ye be separate, then these precious stones cannot utilize its full powers and the potentials of its full powers. But when we come together again, we are truly unstoppable. This is some amazing stuff, my royal family. It truly is. So I'll leave it right there. There will be another video in a little while. It's going to be a while because I'm going to have to really take earnest time to study these. And I probably will do them like three at a time to break them down. So we will also know what they represent and the type of powers that these st stones truly have. So my royal family. Render your voice with your beautiful, divine words. And as always, my royal family, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your support. And with that said, Ashe.